it's Millie and thank you guys for jumping into the Nook Realm again. Today I have the beginning of a new one month long vlog. At least I'm hoping it's only going to take one month. Um, in this vlog I'm going to attempt to read this entire series that I have here on this shelf which is the Three Dark Crown series by Kendar Blake. So if you guys can see here, I actually have this amazing custom pillow that my mom made for me. So she actually gifted me the entire set for Christmas and I haven't read it. It's taken me like, what, eight, nine months now for me to finally pick up the series. Um, but I figured since I actually own the entire series, I should just kind of read it in one shot. So this is my one month long vlog experiment in which I essentially record my thought process reading the series for the first time, also binge reading the series one book right after the other, and just kind of my thoughts overall with the series. Um, I've heard a lot of mixed things about the series. Um, people either really like it or really don't like it, and I'm worried about which side I'm going to end up being for this series. Um, Mainly because I already own them all, so it would kind of suck if I ended up not liking this series, to be honest. Um, so I'm hoping that I do enjoy it, but that I also actually enjoy the story and not just because I own the books. Alright, so this is the first book in the series, Three Dark Crowns, um, for which the series is titled by. And it has to do with these three, um, these three queens, they're triplets, and in this world, um, the royal family always has a set of triplet girls and they are the next queens except there can only be one queen and so therefore there's this competition when the girls turn 16 in which they have to battle to the death essentially and two of them will die and the one who is still alive ends up being the new queen. Um, and then also all three of the queens have these magical abilities and it seems like the world is set off into like these three subgenres based on their magical abilities. So one queen has elemental magic, the other one has naturalist magic, which I think has to do with like growing natural things and having like um, communication with animals. And then the third one is being a poisoner, and so essentially you are immune to poisons. So each of these queens has one of these powers and they kind of represent their sector of other people who have this magic ability. And uh, yeah, then there's some tournament where they fight to the death. So um, off the bat, this premise sounds really, really interesting to me. Um, it sounds exactly like the kind of fantasy books that I usually tend to read. So I'm pretty optimistic that I am going to end up really liking this series, but we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm going to start the first book um, in the beginning of September, and um, I am coming off of a reading slump, so hopefully I can get through this book at a reasonable rate, but I will keep you guys up to date on my progress and how this goes, so if you're interested, stay tuned in. So, so far I've read about the first three chapters of this book and in this book I was kind of curious to see how the POV was going to be split up and it looks like each chapter is going to be told from one of the triplets point of view and it looks like it switches back and forth between all three sisters pretty evenly. Um, off the bat I'm pretty confused with the premise of this book. So essentially, I'm just going to lean back in my chair, there we go. So um, essentially all three of the sisters grow up um, with these foster families and their task is to take care of the queens and help them with their magic abilities and basically prepare them for this battle on their 16th birthday. And so there's a lot of world building and you're thrown into the story straight off the bat. Um, it does go at a slow pace, which is really good because there's so many new characters being introduced. There's this entire system that you're trying to get used to in terms of magic and the politics that's going on behind the scenes. Um, honestly, this book is kind of giving me like Game of Thrones vibes with the whole political kind of backstabby nature that seems to be going on as well as like all of the multiple POVs. Um, so, so far I'm really liking it. It is giving me good vibes. It is, however, 
really, really confusing, but I guess I'll just have to see later on how I like it. Okay, so I have this feeling that I'm mispronouncing like half of the characters' names wrong in this book um, because I do that quite often and I have to like hear the verbal pronunciation to really learn the character's name. So, okay, this is my theory of... I just dropped a dragon. Oh no. Okay, so this is my theory of the three triplet sisters, how you pronounce their names. So there's Queen Catherine, Queen... Arsoni, Arsinoe, <laughs> and then um, Queen Mirabella. I'm pretty sure the only one I'm pronouncing correctly is the last one. We'll see. And then for their love interests, um, we have Piter, um, Billy, which is pretty easy. I'm pretty sure I got that one right. And then um, oh, who's the other guy? Oh, and then Joseph, but like He's pretty easy. I think those are like the three guy characters. And then we have Jules, who is like an honorary female protagonist, which I love her as well. So let's see if I'm pronouncing the- Okay, so luckily I just looked up how to pronounce the characters for Three Dark Crowns, and they already made a one minute video of the author herself explaining how you pronounce these names, so. Hi, I'm Kendara Blake, author of the Three Dark Crown series, and I've gotten a few questions about how to pronounce some of the names and places, so I thought I'd do a guide. Queen Katerine. What? You can say Catherine, I don't care. Arsinoe is Arsinoe, but sometimes I just say Arsinoa for no reason at all. Peter. I know some people say Piter. Okay, so as you guys just saw in that last clip, I had to look up how to pronounce half of the names in this book because I had the feeling that I wasn't pronouncing them correctly. So I was completely blown away by how you pronounce some of these names. All right, so since the last time that I gave you guys a reading recap on the first book here, I read, I think, three more chapters after that, and then it was like five more days before I picked up this book. I just wasn't really... <laughs> How do I put it this way? I was enjoying the book while I was reading it, but then as soon as I put it down and walked away from the book, I didn't feel that draw to go back into this world. Um, so I had a feeling that I had to kind of push myself to really get into it so that I was just sucked into it and I just kept reading because if I just kept picking it up and then putting it back down, it was going to take me the whole month just to read the first book. So. Um, a couple days later, I sat down, which was today, and I ended up reading about 60% of the book in just one sitting. I think I sat down for like two or three hours and I just finished this book and oh my god, I really like this book. Like, a lot. And I was really surprised by it, but I was just really sucked into this book and I read the last page and oh my god the amount of plot twists alone in like the last chapter of this book and then I read the last sentence of this book and I literally gasped out loud and I was like oh my god and I had to like pick up the second book and then stop myself because I didn't want to just like rush into reading it automatically I needed some time to process it so instead of going straight into just reading the second book automatically i stopped and decided to give you guys a reading recap on this first book instead so like i mentioned i really enjoyed this book a lot more than i thought i was going to and usually every time after i finish reading a book i like to go onto goodreads and put my star rating and then also read a bunch of the reviews that other people gave especially the spoiler ones because i like to see how other people reacted to the books you know that i just finished and it's fresh on my mind and i was so surprised because there were so many negative reviews for this book like, the star rating isn't that bad. I think it's like a 3.8 for this first book, which isn't bad by Goodreads standards. But the amount of negative reviews that were written for this book, I was surprised. Um, and a lot of people's issue with this book had to do with the pacing. Like, they said it was really, really slow in the beginning. And then also that it just, like, there was too many characters and stuff like that, and so it was confusing for the pace it was going at. But honestly, everything that I was seeing that people disliked were all things that I kind of liked about this book. Like, yeah, it was slow paced, but 
for the amount of world building that was going on and all the characters being introduced, it kind of had to be slow pace. Like, if it was going any faster, we would get whiplash with this book. Like, I would have been so confused and not understand any of this. So I kind of liked the slow pacing. And then also, I think I mentioned this when I first was reviewing the first couple of chapters, but it continued throughout the rest of the book. It reminded me so much of the format of Game of Thrones, which I really enjoy. Like, I liked not only that we were in the perspective of the triplets, but some of the other side characters as well. We were in their POVs. And I really liked when we have, like, a really diverse variety cast of characters instead of just one or two characters that we switch from their point of views. So... It was confusing to some people, but I really enjoyed that aspect of this book. And then also, um, I was genuinely surprised with how much I liked the three sisters. Like, I thought that I would enjoy maybe one or two of them. Like, I would root for one of the characters. But I found myself kind of rooting for all three of them, which is just going to, like kick me in the ass later because like two of them are supposed to die only one of them is supposed to live but I fall in love with all three of them so how am I supposed to pick which one am I rooting for uh but overall I really like this book I think I'm gonna end up giving it a 4.5 star rating um even as much as I love this book there's just something about it that's not screaming automatically like five star rating but I also can't think of anything that I disliked about this book, but, you know, I did also agree with everybody on the Goodread reviews that um, Joseph's a dick, and we'll see how his storyline continues with the rest of this book, but, um, yeah, I'm really happy with how they set up this first book, I'm really excited to continue the series, and um, at this point, it's only, like, well, actually, it's almost the middle of September, and I've only read the first book, but I'm feeling a resurgence of reading, so I'm still feeling positive that I'm going to get through this series this month. I can do it. I think. My upstairs neighbors are being so ridiculously noisy. Like, I think they have a birthday party, which, why are you having a birthday party when we're still in the middle of a pandemic? I'm sorry, am I interrupting you guys? Oh my god, they're drunk and they're so loud right now and because it's the middle of summer and, you know, everybody has their windows open and I get that, I totally get that, but it's nighttime and with all the windows open, noise carries and they're so loud and I can't concentrate on my reading. This is just a tangent to say that no reading is getting done tonight for one dark throne because my neighbors decided to have a party so that's my little bitchy tangent for the evening hi guys so it's been about a week i think since i last updated you guys so i started one dark throne last week and i just finished it today so it took me about a week to read this book and oh my god it was so good. It was even better than the first book, which I've heard from everybody that if you thought the first book was slow, you were going to like the second book a lot more because it's just action packed from the very beginning. And they were right. Um, so I originally was going to like, you know, tell you guys about the book as I was going along with it. But um, I also started a new job this week. And so I was kind of preoccupied with that. And that also means that now I'm actually leaving my house to go to work. And so now I have a commute. And so I was listening to this book um, as an audiobook on my way to and from work. And then I would get home and I would like continue reading it physically. And so I was getting through it a little bit each day. Um, but I really, really enjoyed this book. So this one starts directly after where the first book ends um, with the three queens. And they're still fighting each other. They started their ascension year and they're fighting each other for the throne. And there's so many misunderstandings that happen that lead characters to believe that the other ones are trying to kill them. And it's it's just so great how everything is going on behind the scenes. And you're getting so much more character depth with like our three main protagonists as well as like the other really strong secondary side characters. And um, Jules, who's a side character from the first book, she 
is not one of the queens, but she's always kind of seen as someone like really important to the storyline. And then you kind of find out some secret about her that um, makes her even more important to the plot. And so she really acts as like kind of like the fourth queen almost um, in terms of importance to the book. And um, I don't dislike Joseph as much. Um, after reading this second book. I didn't really hate him that much with the first book, but I was just like not happy with him. And then Billy is my favorite character out of everyone. He is just so pure and wholesome and good. And like if he dies in this series, I will throw a fit because he just needs to be protected at all costs. So ended up giving this one a five stars. I did not find anything wrong with this book. It was so good and I'm so excited to read the third book. But publication order wise, this novella, it's like two novellas in one book, but this book was released um, in between the second and the third book. And so by publication order, this should be the next set that I bring up. But I'm not sure like in terms of like the story, plot and premise, if this is a good idea or not. But I think I'm gonna take a break and read it because it's pretty short. It has two novellas in here. So I think I'm gonna read this one next in between the second and the third book. Okay, so I ended up surprising myself and I read the novella prequels in one day. The Queens of Fenbrin is a collection of two short story novellas. Um, the first one is called The Young Queens and it basically has to do with the three triplets of their story of when they were living together in the black cottage before they went off with their foster families um, when they were little. And then the second novella is called The Oracle Queen and that has to do with Queen Elizabeth, which was the last um, uh, queen who had seer magic abilities. After her, it was essentially banned and so no queen could have, um, there couldn't be a queen that had seer abilities on the throne because she was considered the mad queen. She was supposedly had these visions of um, some members of her council that were gonna end up assassinating her and so then she went ahead and killed off all of these um, noble families instead and so they locked her up. And then after that, anytime any of the triplets were born with seer magic, they would automatically be drowned at birth because it, they decided that that wasn't even gonna be an option. So her short story is essentially her what actually happened because it's a little bit different than what the legends say. So these were two completely different stories. The first one takes place, um, you know, about 10 years before the beginning of the book. And the second short story takes place 500 years before the beginning of the first book. Um, so these were kind of nice. I feel like in terms of do you actually need to read these two prequel novellas for the story? No, not really. They didn't really bring that much new information. I think especially with the first one, a lot of it was information we already knew. So within the first and the second book, they would talk about specific incidents that happened in their past. And so all of these incident incidences were referenced in the first novella. We just got to actually see them play out in chronological order. So it was nice, but not necessary. That being said, if you are gonna read these prequel novellas, you can't read it before the first book, even though it's a prequel, because it does contain one of the major spoilers of the series. And so you would have to read it at least after the first book. Um, and then in terms of the second short story, it's kind of, you know, completely separated from the actual main story. I'm thinking that maybe there might be some foreshadowing with what happened to that queen with what might happen in the future storyline. Um, Honestly, that's all I can think of at this point. In terms of like the actual enjoyment of these two novellas, I really like the stories. They weren't anything spectacular, but it was a really nice, quick, easy read. Like I said, it's about like 230 pages and I read it all in one day, so it was a really quick, easy read. Um, so yeah, if you wanna read them, I would recommend them. They are good prequel novellas. If you don't wanna read them, it's okay to skip it because it doesn't really kind of stray away from the actual original series, which is just a quartet. So I've hit the halfway point with my series now, and I'm really excited. I'm loving the first two books. I like this book, 
and I'm thinking that I can actually finish the third and the fourth book hopefully in like a week week and a half I'm averaging about like four or five days per book um, just because I am going through it kind of slowly reading like 50 80, 80 pages a night but yeah I'm hopeful that I'm going to enjoy the third and fourth book hey guys um so it's been a while since I have given you guys an update on the vlog in fact I think it's been about a good two weeks since I last updated you guys so um in that time I did manage to read the third book which is two dark rains so um I kind of went through a bookish slump like I didn't read for about two weeks and I didn't um, do like any bookish content. I didn't record anything. I didn't edit. I didn't upload. I was barely on Bookstagram. If you can hear that sound in the background, it is my dogs chewing on their bones. So apologize for that. Um, so I didn't really read a lot, um, especially the end of September. I barely read anything. And I was planning on finishing the series in September, but I didn't get around to it. So I started the third book in the very beginning of October. Um, and I read this one in about, like, I want to say three or four days. Um, and I just, I think I was so not used to recording anything, so I forgot to kind of give vlog updates as I was reading this. Um, so essentially, with this book, I ended up giving it a four stars. So with this book, I didn't like it as much as the first two books. Um, if you guys remember the first one, I gave it a 4.5, and the second one, I gave it a 5 stars. Um, this one started right after where the second one ended, but at this point, the characters are in, like, three different main locations. So we have some characters who are in the capital, and we've already been in the capital in the first two books, and so we're familiar with it. But then the other two locations were really new to us as the readers. So we had some characters that were off the island and they were on the mainland. And then we had um, some characters that were in Bastion, which is the warrior city. And we've heard of it before in the other books, but this was the first time we were actually visiting it. And we were also in Sunpool, which is the city for the seers. And so there's a lot of new locations. And so there was a lot of need for world building. So I do understand why it slowed down. Um, but it was kind of caught between trying to world build and introduce all of these new characters with also keeping the same action of the plot. And so we did slow down a bit in the beginning. And on one hand, I get it because we had to do all of this introduction to all of these new cities and these new characters. But on the other hand, it slowed down the plot for me after the second book kind of ramped it up. So I almost wish that the events that happened in the mainland were kind of its own novella. Like, instead of the novella that we had with the characters, the three triplets, um, in, like, their beginning early childhood, instead of that being the focus of the novella, I kind of wish that the novella was about the characters that ended up going to the mainland and just kind of their story there um, because we had one of the characters who kept having these nightmares but they were actually these dreams that she was seeing um, of a person who was around 400 years prior and so I kind of wish that that was its own separate story because I do think that it's important to the plot but it just it just needed to be separate from the rest of the book because it weighed down the book a lot because we just wasted so much time of the characters trying to figure out if those dreams were even actually like made up or not and so I feel like that kind of took away from the plot um, and then there was like some slight character development but for the most part the characters kind of stayed true to how they have been in the first two books so again this book wasn't bad but it just wasn't my favorite and it's actually so far my least favorite out of the three um, so I'm gonna start the fourth and final book. So Five Dark Fates is the final book in the series and I'm super excited. I have a bunch of other books that I'm planning to read in October but I really want to finish this series um, mainly because I just want to um, get still stuck into the story and not get distracted with other books. Um, and then also because I want to get this vlog up for you guys because this is technically my first reading vlog um, and it's taking about six weeks. So I kind of want to wrap up this vlog and get it up for you guys. So it is Tuesday now and I'm going to start reading the 
fourth and final book, and I'm hoping that I'll finish this one in about three or four days. I think it is the biggest one out of the whole series, but it's only about, I want to say, 450 pages, so it's pretty doable that I can finish it within a couple of days. So I'll let you guys know how that goes. And there's Dougies. Hi, Dougies. And the big one. So I'm here to close off my reading vlog for Three Dark Crowns. So I ended up finishing Five Dark Fates um, yesterday and I needed like a full day to just process my thoughts with not only this book but the entire series and all I have to say is this is kind of how I felt when I finished How I Met Your Mother when I finished Game of Thrones season 8, the season we don't talk about, when I just finished season 7 of The Hundred, where you have some a story that you love so much and then at the very end they ruin it and uh okay first of all I have to respect Kendara Blake as an author. This was the choice that she made for the story, for her characters. You know, you have to respect an author's vision for their story. It is their creation. It is their baby. That being said, this book was so disappointing. <laughs> so essentially, Five Dark Fates was finishing up the whole storyline. You know, we had a very epic battle to see who would be the actual last remaining queen. And... The first half of this book I was really enjoying. It felt like the second book. It was like very action-packed and there were just like all of the misunderstandings going on that I really liked. Um, and it seemed like it was it was going back to what I was really enjoying with the series and then the last hundred pages you have your like epic climatic huge battle scene and then it just ends super quickly and there's so many plot holes left in this story like so many like at first I was thinking like you know just one or two things that I like didn't enjoy as much but then I was like the more I thought about it the more I'm just like wait but what about this and this and what about this and there were so many things that were left undone or just loose ends and a lot of the stuff had to do with the third book with like new elements that they brought in which I didn't really enjoy but I was okay with it because I thought that it was just expanding on the story and then there were several elements that they brought in the third book that they didn't even resolve in the last book they just like you just forgot about it and I don't want to say specifics because I don't want to go into spoilers um, but yeah there was a lot of things that just got left unresolved and let's talk about the character deaths okay because I knew there were gonna be character deaths I was fully prepared in my heart of hearts, I, I knew that it wasn't going to be a happy ending for everybody, but I was not expecting for the characters that died to have died in the way that they did. So one of them, um, okay, one of the characters, one of the main characters, I did predict that this character was going to die at the end, and I had a feeling that this character was going to do kind of this like reversal self-sacrifice thing, um, and it kind of did happen. It was a little bit more like underwhelming than I thought it would be. I thought the moment would be like a lot more epic. And then there was one character death that I had a feeling like 50-50 that this character was going to die. And I was fully prepared for if the fact that this character died, it was going to be like this like emotional tear-jerking moment also of self-sacrifice but in a completely different way. And the character died in like one sentence and I had to reread the chapter because I was like wait did this character actually die like I thought it was like a fake out or something like that and then I was like okay the character's not really dead they're gonna come back the next chapter and then the next chapter was their funeral and I was like but what and it was like this powerful character one of the strongest characters in the book and then the way they died was just so simple and easy and it just felt like such a useless death and it didn't even have the whole like emotional impact because it was done like not even at the end of the book but like before the beginning of the last battle and so it didn't have that emotional tear joke tear jerkingness that I thought it would and so ultimately 
when I finished this book, I felt so disappointed because it just didn't end the way that I thought it would. And there were so many characters in the last half of the book that didn't act based on their personalities that we've seen in the other books. They just acted differently. And honestly, I have no idea what happened. It was almost like the ending was so rushed and just not as thought out as the rest of the books. Like the other books were so well thought through, so well written, and even though it was a plot heavy book, there was still some characterization that I could appreciate. And in this fourth book, it was just like all of it went out the window. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. <laughs> and so now it's like, I hate it because I don't know if I can recommend the series or not. Because like the first two books are amazing. I love them so much. The third one was not my favorite, but I still enjoyed it. And the fourth book, I was enjoying it until the end and I realized how it was gonna end and it wasn't anything that I predicted, so. Yeah, I don't know how to feel about this series now. So overall, this was a really interesting experience getting to binge read, binge read this series. I don't often get to like read the same books in the series like one after the other. I usually read a book and then wait a year, year and a half for the sequel to come out and then I have to reread the first book because I don't remember anything. And it was really nice that I actually got to just read this all in consecutive order. Um, and I could remember all of the details and all of the emotions and I really enjoyed doing this So I think definitely this is something I'm going to do in the future where I start reading series all in one shot Especially ones that have been completed Because um, I really enjoyed it I'm not entirely sure if I'm gonna vlog the whole thing from start to finish because this was a pretty short series It was a quartet and all of the books were between 400 to 500 pages um, so it was easy enough to read and it still took me six weeks. So I feel like a longer series or just a series with thicker books, it's going to take me months and I don't know if I want to like record during that whole time because then it's going to take a long time for the vlogs to come up for you guys to see it. Um, so I think I might format it for like more like weekly reading vlogs, but I still really enjoyed doing this um, and just going through this whole experience and it's going to be nice because I get to look back at my experience of reading the series for the first time in the moment and like all of my thoughts directly after I finish the book. Um, so it's really nice and I really enjoyed it. So overall first book I gave it a 4.5 stars. Second book I gave it a 5 stars. The pre-novellas I gave them 4 stars. The third book I gave it a 4 star. And this last book, I think I'm going to have to give it a three stars. So overall, I really did enjoy the series as I was reading it. Am I happy with the ending? No. But the characters were amazing. The plot was amazing. The world building was amazing. And I do still recommend the series because overall, it was such a fun experience. To read it even if I don't agree with the ending but yeah let me know if you guys have read this series and what you guys thought of the ending specifically but overall the whole book and which were your favorite characters I think for me my favorite characters were definitely uh, Queen Arsenault I love Jules um, I love Billy Billy is my precious little cinnamon roll and of course I also really did like Queen Mirabella and Queen Katarine um, so yeah, thank you guys for joining me on this journey reading the Three Dark Crown series and um, if you like this video, please make sure to check out the rest of my bookish content, subscribe if you're interested, and uh, join my little Into the Nook family. Alright, see you guys next time. Bye!